Hi guys, my name is Jazz Gulati, and in this video, I'm going to show you the exact protocol I followed to re cement a resin bonnet bridge that failed. I'm going to give you the commentary of exactly what I was thinking at the time, what I was doing, and also talk you through some design features and just tips and tricks when you're working with resin bonnet bridges. So let's start. The very first thing you should do with any indirect restoration that you clean in the sink, like I did here, is you block the sink with tissue paper. It's never happened to me where a veneer or something has gone down the sink, but it could happen. It's a very easy thing to do. So block it. Next thing is air abrasion of the resin bonnet bridge. This is so important. Look at that. Look how easily and nicely the cement got removed there. What, what would you use instead if you didn't use this? An ultrasonic scaler? Diamond burrs? It doesn't make sense. So if you don't yet have an, uh, an air abrasion unit, get one. Very important. So really nice and clean res bonnet bridge ready to re-cement. Now this was a 80 year old gentleman uh, and I think there are some features of this res bonnet bridge that aren't amazing and we'll talk about that shortly. So first things first, clean the tooth thoroughly. I've got my ultrasonic scaler. I sometimes even use soft flex discs which you'll see later uh, and air abrade. I even air abrade the tooth. I don't care if it gets a bit messy. The tooth must be air abraded. I'm not going to put on rubber dam just for this bit because it's very very quick and easy. So uh, very tolerant patient so we can look at nice and nice and clean and let's skip to the good bits and skip to the good bits lots and lots of cleaning i spent so much time now the sad thing is this patient had, you see a bit of cement that got, got out there this patient had this resin bridge re-cemented once and it only lasted a week and i'll show you why uh, this is what i think happened when the resin bridge was re-cemented there we are I've, i'm doing a rehearsal of the path of insertion and it's not quite seating well so guys, it's really, really important to always try in and rehearse your reservoir bridge. Whether it's a re-cement or a de novo bridge, it's important to rehearse the path of insertion. So here you can see I'm, I'm not getting the feel that I need. So I know something's not quite right. So then I investigated and I saw that actually there is some cement there. I'll show you exactly where it was. I sometimes use a, a UV light to see, okay, where is this cement? Where am I getting hung up here? Why is this bridge not seating? And then you'll see that actually you do see the cement sometimes with a UV torch. I use a soft flex disc, get really, really nice and smooth. And one thing you'll see now is a bit of cement that I missed in between the teeth in the embrasure spot right there. So let me show you a little trick I use to remove the cement. I get a thin IPR burr and I'll show you now again where this cement is. There we are. So you see how it goes uh, bright purple? That's fluorescing uh, in that area. So I'm going to go ahead and get my burr, my air braid, and help, which helps me to see. And I'm going to get my burr now. Well, there we are. Let me show you that again so you don't miss it. Okay. So I've got one of those uh, thin needle shaped IPR burrs. And there we are. I managed to get it out. Got a little bit lucky here, otherwise you'd be there for ages trying to remove it. So I used a burr, managed to pick it out. I'm again going back. I'm really, really thoroughly cleaning. That then gives us an opportunity to retry and rehearse the bridge again. There we are. That is now fitting much better, much nicer. And I've even rehearsed it with my fingers. I know how this feels. I know how the contact area looks on the adjacent incisor. So when I actually come to cementing it, I know what the feel will be like. So it's really important to feel the fit so that you can actually uh, do a good job when you're actually going to go back and cement it. I air braid again to get that optimum oxide layer, which is uh, really important when you're doing metal-based reservoir bridges and also zirconia. I'm putting the ceramic primer as part of a Panavia V5, which contains the everything you need to get this uh, surface active to bond the Panavia onto it. I use Panavia V5 currently. Again, go back and air obey the tooth. You can see I'm very anal about getting everything super, super clean. Once I've got uh, that sorted, I'm gonna put the Optrigate in. So rubber dam gets in the way. You should use rubber dam. I love using rubber dam. But if, a rubber, if the rubber dam is actually interfering, like imagine you're putting the Resbine bridge and it's pinching the rubber dam, that's not a good scenario. Now, he had a well-behaved tongue and you'll see how lovely and dry I'm able to get it. I also instruct the patient to breathe through their nose. And now I've got PTFE to prevent the adjacent tooth from getting etched. That helps with the cement not getting stuck to the adjacent tooth. I'm um, getting plenty of etch on there. Let's go to the next bit. We don't have to watch the full thing. We get it washed, the usual stuff get some cotton rolls in and you see that lovely, look at that beautiful etched surface, right? That is a beautiful etched surface. That's what I want. Uh, I've got the orange filter on so we don't end up curing anything. I'm getting the tooth primer. So you follow whichever cement you use, right? I suggest you use something like Panavia or Relikes Ultimate, which has MDP, I believe. You want to use something with MDP, which is what the research shows is what we need to bond a reservoir and bridge to a, a enamel, basically. So I'm using a Panavia tooth primer now on the tooth. 
nicely etched and clean tooth. Gonna use the high volume suction to sort of evaporate the excess of that primer. I'm using an opaque resin bond bridge uh, material, so opaque cement. Panavia uh, does different shades, and the, uh, the opaque one is good. It's my general protocol because it, it basically prevents your tooth from graying, basically. It can still happen, but it helps you compared to using a translucent cement. Now, remember earlier, I rehearsed how it's going to feel. So now put it in, and I and here's the real magic here. You need to pinch like there's no tomorrow. I'm using my thumb and, I'm, and my index finger, and if your thumb and your index finger isn't hurting afterwards, you haven't been doing a good job, basically. So as I've got it pinched, the abutment tooth and the retainer wing pinched together, I'm getting micro brushes, I'm getting probes, I'm getting TP brushes to get the area nice and clean. Take it easy with the TP brushes if you've got someone with inflamed gums, because what you don't want is a big uh, bleeding mess now. So there we are. I've pinched for a long time now. I'm going to just clean some of the excess cement and go back and pinch again. I want to maintain that surface contact of the retainer up against this etch enamel. And I'm actually being really risky here a little bit, but I tried to get some floss in at that moment in time because I felt like I could. So I did it. So there we are. I'm pinching, pinching, pinching. I'm keeping my finger on there. Uh, we're going to cure it now, even though a, opaque doesn't cure so well because it's opaque, and B, the light's not going to get through the metal, okay? I'm still curing a little bit around the area, and I'm still maintaining it. However, most of the curing, or all of the setting actually, will be chemical, because there's no way I can cure through the metal. So I'm just giving it time. I'm not rushing. Follow the manufacturer instructions for any cement you use. And the cement sometimes annoyingly gets in between the teeth like it did here. So just take a bit of time with a probe uh, or a micro brush or, or a, a TV brush again to go inside and remove that excess cement. Don't go crazy though. This is the time where it's critical that you don't disturb the cement loot so much. So I do most of the cleaning now, but if there's a little bit in a delicate area and I don't want to put lots of vibration, I'm not going to go crazy. Like here, uh, there was a bit there uh, and I just removed it, but I didn't go absolutely nuts. Now, checking the occlusion. This is really important, guys. I'm going to give you, uh, show you how I check, check the occlusion. So uh, I check for any gross issues with the occlusion. Have I potentially cemented it too high or anything like that? I get my patient to bind together. I've got the red articulating paper in, okay, just to see. Now, I'm gonna get my patient to grind left and right and forward, left, right, forward. I'm checking all the excursions. Now we have all the red marks, okay? And then we check for, and I'm gonna pause it here so you can see. So the red marks were the excursions. The blue mark is the, the MIP or the centric stop, right? So when the patient bites together, the blue is where they bite. With a reservoir bridge pontic, it's okay to have light contact on your pontic, but I don't want any excursions on this reservoir bridge. So we don't want any red, but we want to maintain the blue. Let me say that again. We don't want any red because that's the excursions, but we can maintain the blue. Okay, so watch. I'm going to use my burr again. I'm getting rid of any red. By the way, this is all just an emergency appointment. Okay, so I'm not going to you know, polish the ceramic here, I'm going to do that another time. So I didn't do this bridge, by the way, but I'm going to help this person out with the best way I can to re-cement it. So again, I'm getting rid of all the red. We're going to check again, bite together, and any, any sort of excess contents I see that are, that are not quite right on the adjacent teeth, I'll get, uh, get rid of it on the abutment tooth, for example. So again, check again. Grind, grind, grind. Bite, 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 okay? Do we have the red and the blue matching? No, we don't. So I'm going to get rid of some of the red. Any excursions, get rid of it. We want light, single point contact for the Pontic. And that's how I did the resin boron bridge re-cementation. So some of the lessons there were air abrasion to remove the old cement, rehearsing your path of insertion, following the manufacturer's instructions for whichever cement you want to use, and then checking the occlusion at the end to make sure you have don't have any excursions, no more red, and then tap, 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 we are allowed to have some blue basically. And that's how I re-cemented this Reservoir and Bridge. If you'd like to learn more, I have a super valuable course called Reservoir and Bridges Masterclass. So RBB Masterclass, uh, it covers the A to Z of Reservoir and Bridges, both metal-based and zirconia-based. How and why the design that you saw here is not ideal for lower incisors and why you can improve on this. And also, when should you re-cement a reservoir and bridge and when should you accept that actually the design is not good enough and you need to tell the patient that they need to consider a new one if they want a predictable result. So that's rbbmasterclass.com. Check it out. I think it's something like $90 at this time of posting. Uh, it's, it's really, really valuable. Lots of dentists give me rave reviews about it. So please check it out if you want to learn more. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next, uh, next piece of clinical content that I make. Also, comment below and subscribe. If you like this kind of commentary, I can do more of these. I love actually doing them. So if you liked it, you got to let me know. Otherwise, I'll stop making them. All right. Thank you so much. Cheers.